Hello everyone, it's morning here and this is Quintopia and I would like to uh, welcome you to the first of what I hope are many Engage review videos of a lot of my European and Japanese stock. The idea for this is not mine, I was actually inspired by this by two great video channels, Engage UK and EWS 6800. I will uh, direct you to those in the, in the written comments here. Check them out, the great, great uh, reviews of various uh, N-scale stuff. Um, but uh, I wanted to uh, take some time and do some video of some of my reviews because when I write about them, you don't always capture all the elements of a train or model that you, you want to try to capture or that you can capture in a video. So here we are. And for my first review, we're going to look at this 8-car set from Minitrix. It is uh, catalog number or product number 12197. It's the ICE 3 8-car set. Uh, I picked this up several months ago, uh, actually on my trip to Germany, at a hobby shop in Frankfurt. So, um, actually, sorry, not Frankfurt, Hamburg. <laughs> I've never been to Frankfurt. But uh, I did pick it up in Hamburg, and uh, I'll take you through the unboxing of it. I've already had it out and done, some, uh, done a little work on it, but uh, I thought this would be a good thing to start off this video review series with. So here we go. comes in a... Uh, a box, as you can tell, um, a cardboard box with pretty standard packaging for Minitrix on their on their their passenger sets and so forth. So we'll set that aside. And here we have the actual train set itself. You have your little instruction booklet, which is standard with Minitrix, and it comes in four different languages at least. So uh, if you're English speaking like me, and uh, you'll have plenty of uh, help or at least information here in English to help you through the model. Um, that's useful to keep handy. Uh, I always try to keep these in the original boxes and always save your boxes. So here's the, the train set itself. Uh, as you can see it's it's laid out in a very uh, plastic shell with a, with a clear plastic overlay. So if we just pop this open, take off the top cover, And get a little bit closer look at the trains itself. They uh, they come packaged up with uh, all of these extra um, plastic or or whatever it is acetate sort of protectors, which keeps them being scratched in transit. Let's take a look at one of the motor cars. They just take it gently, or you can grab the plastic underneath it and pull it out. And here it is. Now this is a a hobby model, uh, I think, is what Minitrix originally called this when they first came out, and I believe this is probably the the original Ice 3 hobby model that Minitrix came out with back in uh, 2005 or 2004 or something. And it's it's a fairly simple model. It's uh, it's going to lack a few features, um, and I picked this setup for uh, 200 euros when I was in uh, Hamburg, um, which is a lot of money for a train set, um, but considering the the cost of the Trix or Fleischmann um, brand products, I actually think it's a pretty good price. Now, if you're looking for an Ice 3 set, there's a couple options. Arnold has one, and I'm not sure if Fleischmann has one yet or not, but I know the Arnold one um, is frankly a little bit more detailed, and from what I've seen, it probably has a little bit more, has many more features in this version, but it's also going to cost you I think about 30% more than this one will. So if you're just looking for a basic set, this is probably a good option. Now the the uh, end cars, these control cars, are not powered. They are they are essentially dummy units. And the one major flaw I'll give them is they don't have any lights in them. So I actually went in and, and added an LED, and I'll show you some pictures of what I did to do that to accomplish that. Okay, so the motor car is this one here. Um, obviously these have already been removed from the original packaging so your placement of your motor car may vary. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, not that much heavier. Um, the thing I do like about uh, the Trix locomotives is the metal gears. Um, this, uh, this motor does have uh, two flywheels, um, traction tires on, uh, on two of the wheels and all four of the axles are powered on the motor car. So this is our it's our motor car, conveniently hidden away in the board bistro car. Um, 
Now, a couple other comments on this set. Um, it uses the Minitrix, um, sort of close coupling device, which are these little guys here. Not sure how well that shows up in the video. Um, they can be a little fiddly. Uh, they slide into these these slots. Um, trying to get it closer there without going out of focus. They slide into these little slots here, which are kind of a gaping maw that, that wants to take that little plastic piece. They do a nice job once connected. They are a little bit of a hassle con to connect. Now, I do have to say the detail and the, uh, the, the printing on these uh, on this set is just really, it's just again, another excellent um, example of what, uh, what is being done by manufacturers these days with, uh, with really doing a nice job of crisp lines and really precise printing at really what is a, just such a tiny scale. I mean, it just kind of amazes me the, the level of detail that uh, manufacturers are able to get in N-Scale these days, particularly considering if you compare it to anything um, from even 10 years ago, we really are in a, a golden age of good quality uh, N-Gage locomotives in whatever country uh, you, uh, you model. Now, the, uh, I mentioned this earlier, the, uh, the, the issue with the lights on the set does concern me. Um, I was able to get around that by doing a little bit of a, uh, an exercise in, in getting electrical power into the body of the control cab units and then wiring in an LED. Uh, I did that by using the, uh, the standard brass uh, spring devices that uh, you can get from Minitrix for adding electrical power to any of their coaches. And that continues, and that extends the electrical power from the rail up into the cab of the unit. And what I did is I used copper, adhesive back copper tape, and put it underneath the little, I'm not sure what they're called, little uh, tension washer thing that holds the actual, ac the, the, the trucks or bogies onto the, the chassis. And that gets you your electrical uh, contact inside the body of the unit. And from there, it's just wiring in an LED which uh, can then be uh, placed up near the, the headlight section of the cab. Um, I uh, originally, when I first put the LED in there, it was a little bit too bright and I only had a 580 ohm resistor on it and it, I had to take it up to 850 ohm. Because the problem is, is that uh, the white plastic can be fairly translucent with the LED. So you really want to take down your, the brightness of the LED in there, otherwise it just shines through and you have this very strange looking illuminated front and end rather than just illuminated headlights. Um, at some point I've considered actually painting the inside of the cab to block some of that light so that only the light comes through the headlight section, but I haven't done that yet because that's just one of those sort of permanent things that um, I, I'm, I'm resistant to do to such a nice model or a new model and you always want to sort of preserve the original condition of it. One of the other Important aspects, I think, of, of N-gauge trains is how easy is it to get the shell off to replace the decoder to do motor maintenance, and some of them it's it's quite nerve-wracking. Um, so let me go ahead and go through a exercise where I remove the shell from this the motor chassis here, the motor coach, and uh, it's the the seams are really good on this. You can hardly find it, but I just take a little piece of styrene, slip it under here by the truck. Seems to be the best gap, and that gives enough. Uh, loosening so it just pops right off. And there is our motor. Um, you see the two flywheels there and of course the all-important um, NEM 651 socket with a DCC decoder already installed. Stock from the kit it comes with this dummy plug right here uh, which I've removed and kept safe in the box with the other little bits and parts and there is your motor coach for this thing. So we're going to do another look at this motor and let's see how quiet it is. How does the sound on this thing compare to other motors and trains? Because I think quiet and uh, how loud a motor is is an important aspect. So here we have the motor coach on the uh, rolling road test track, voltage meter, and a free decibel, uh, decibel meter counter um, on my smartphone so you can actually watch to see exactly how many decibels uh, this motor puts out um, and we'll see how it does so let's go ahead and give it a little power and see what happens as you can see this is saying uh, my talking voice here is about 40 to 50 uh, decibels um, 
I'll go ahead and be quiet so we just pick up only the motor for this test. So here we go. So at 10 volts, it's about uh, 15 decibels or so. Let's go ahead and take it up a little bit higher. At about 15 volts, about 27 decibels. All right, let's see how that compares to other trains. So at 10 volts, we see the thallus is at, the Cato thallus is at 31. It's about a little bit over 12, 38. So here it is, the Minitrix 12197 ICE 3 uh, Class 406F in its uh, eight car set. How does it all stack up? Let's look at the checklist. So for appearance, I'm going to give it a four. I think it's great, but I think that probably from the photos I've seen, I think Arnold actually takes it another level higher. In terms of performance, I'm going to give it a 5. It's really a smooth running motor, uh, good running train, no problem there. Conversion to DCC, I give it another 5. The uh, Whatever issues Minitrix had with its NEM651 sockets seem to be solved. They're good. In terms of cost, um, given that it is a, a German and not uh, a Kato or Japanese train, they're going to be more expensive. Uh, but still, $200, I think. Uh, without lights, I'm going to give it a little bit of a knock there. So I'll just say it's four. It's okay. X factor, and what I mean by that is, is there anything special about this this set, this train that that gives it an extra bonus? And really, I can't think of anything. So overall, we have two fours, an eight, plus uh, two fives. So it's a, it's about a four point five out of five. Whoops, a little sloppy handwriting. So a good train set, not quite perfect. Um, I think the, the light issue is a real confounding one, why they didn't do some simple, um, easy solution to get some lights into it. But other than that, it's a really good train, uh, good value for money, and very nicely done by Minitrix. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this report. Bye.